Good morning, everyone. Um, as I mentioned, we were uh, surprised to see the uh, turnout today. Um, we are. Uh, we will, uh, How about now? Um, I am Mark McKean, the president of the Kings River Water Quality Coalition, and I want to welcome all of you to the first annual meeting. Uh, many of you are wondering why you're here, and I hope that we can answer these questions as the presentations are made. The program today will try to answer as many questions as possible. We anticipate to have time for questions at the end of the program. However, as you, you will come to know, there still remain some unanswered questions from the regional board. We continue to meet with the board to get these answers. Some of the, of the answers uh, are a negotiation in progress. Staff and board have diligently entered into discussions with regional board staff to resolve the differences that remain. And you'll see some of those today as the presentations are made. I just want to add um, also that the staff and board are very serious about keeping costs to farmers as low as possible. To date, the Kings River Water Quality Coalition dues are the lowest that I am aware of, and we aim to keep it that way. Um, the, I, as I mentioned, the, prop, the, the, the presentations today we hope are going to answer as many questions as we get, but we would like for you to hold your questions to the end because we think some of the presentations will answer questions that you may have during the, the process. Um, and also, in the back, there is a box if you have comments or suggestions, um, you can stick those in there. And then also, considering the fact that we also have a, an afternoon session, but we know that there are several people who got turned away today, and this will be available online, and we will discuss that later on. Our first speaker today is Dave Orth. Dave is currently the general manager of the Kings River Conservation District and has more than 28 years of experience in California water policy and management. In one of his roles as the general manager, he oversees the staffing of the Kings River Water Quality Coalition. Over the years, Dave has been an important advocate, minimizing the costs and burdens to growers during the development of the surface water quality program and in the recent addition of groundwater quality. Through Dave's efforts in collaborating with commodity and coalition representatives, the regulations we are facing today while difficult and burdensome in many, in many ways are less intrusive and less costly than others. The coalition's collaborative effort in the Kings River Conservation District and its staff allows us to maintain some of the lowest acreage fees for implementing the regulation. Dave's leadership in this issue and many others has been a great benefit to the farming community in this region. Um, and if you don't think that's true, if you know dairymen, you might ask them how they're getting along with their program. They will be providing us with a brief history of the regulation and overview of the coalition structure. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everyone. I, uh, I too, am quite surprised by the turnout. Uh, I think the regional board will be pleased to see that they've gotten your attention. Um, and, I, and I apologize for that. But uh, I want to talk just for a few minutes this morning, give you some backdrop on how we got here. And um, I guess I'm charge of my PowerPoint. There we go. So, you know, I think most of us know that for well over 30 years, ag had a general waiver from the regulation of waste discharge in this state, um, and actually nationally. But uh, in 2002, our California legislature decided that um, those waivers needed to be evaluated on a kind of a, a five-year rolling basis. Um, and so that launched kind of a new process for all of us in um, evaluating uh, waste, potential waste discharge impacts uh, from irrigated agriculture. And since 2002, um, I know you felt we have certainly tried uh, to um, represent you in, in this increasing uh, focus on regulation of, of, of ag discharges. Um, the, Regional Water Quality Control Board's authority comes under a provision of the state law, which is generally referred to as the Porter Cologne uh, Water Quality Control Act. Um, and that body of law directs the regional boards of this state to protect the quality of waters of the state, which are inclusive of surface water and groundwater, 
And typically what the board does is issue either waste discharge requirements, general waivers of those discharge requirements, which are now conditional due to the 2002 law, or even general orders. Um, and so you'll hear those terms throughout the day used to kind of describe the body of regulation authority that the regional board applies. So a little bit of background relative to how coalitions were formed. The, the waivers that were adopted in 2006 by the regional board um, were focused on surface water quality only, but they allowed coalitions to be formed so that each of you didn't have to obtain your own individual waste discharge permit or waste discharge requirement from the regional board. Um, the water agencies in the region um, began a discussion of whether or not it was in your interest and, and our ability to create that coalition for you um, as an option to, to being individually regulated. And partially based on Kings River Conservation District's long-standing history of doing surface water quality monitoring, and remember this original program was focused on surface water quality, our board of directors um, and the board of the Kings River Water Association elected to participate in a broader coalition to give uh, those who were potential dischargers of waste to surface water bodies um, an opportunity to be represented through a coalition. So in 2002, the Southern San Joaquin Valley Water uh, the Southern San Joaquin Valley uh, Water Quality Coalition was formed to represent um, uh, water agencies or, and landowners on the Kings, Cahuilla, Tule, and Kern watersheds. Very large coalition uh, representing over 4 million acres of irrigable lands. And our membership ultimately grew to, to over a million acres. Um, those individuals being parties that felt they needed to be covered under the Surface Water Regulatory Program. Um, at that point in time, the coalition uh, elected to have Kings River Conservation District serve as its agent, and so our, our staff have basically run that organization for the entire Tulare Lake Basin. And during that time, the State Water Resources Control Board and the Regional Water Quality Control Boards uh, approved the initial two-year conditional waiver of ag uh, discharge into surface waters, and um, those waivers were extended for uh, several years and periods thereafter. So, I think a, a lot of us uh, probably didn't appreciate that when this change uh, and, and that came initially from a legislative mandate again in 2002, um, the regional board always intended to expand that surface water regulatory program to include groundwater quality. Um, they launched a fairly extensive public process that had a environmental impact assessment done. Some of you may remember and some of you hopefully didn't attend um, very large meetings in uh, Tulare with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Uh, similar, very large, I think over a thousand growers attended a, a meeting in Kern County a number of years ago to express our collective industry concern about the scope and magnitude of those proposed regulations expanding into groundwater. Um, we made some progress, you may not feel it, but, uh, or feel like it, we made progress, but where that order originally started and where we are today, and I think you'll hear details of that this morning, uh, is a much better situation than where, where we could have been. Um, the new order unfortunately assumes that if you irrigate, you are a potential discharger of waste to groundwater. Now this is partially fueled by the, the political uh, and legal backdrop of contaminated drinking water supplies for local communities. Um, and uh, that really fueled this. We tried very hard uh, in the process to try to distinguish and identify specific conditions that would allow some dischargers not to be covered and ultimately what we ended up with, and you'll learn more about today, is high and low vulnerability determinations. Uh, but what, what the program has essentially evolved to now is, as I've referred to in the past, is a massive data collection effort. The first several years, if not longer, of this regulatory program is going to be aimed at collecting information from you and assessing and comparing that information to trends in drinking water and groundwater quality and then trying to make uh, 
connections and assumptions as to where management practices might be improved relative to irrigation and nitrogen application. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, sampling and monitoring to, to try to identify whether nitrates, which are a primary source of this, this regulatory program's focus, um, to determine whether those are um, agricultural related nitrates, whether they are legacy issues or current issues, and all of this information will allow us to narrow down and hopefully restrict and exempt uh, large uh, numbers of growers, if not all of you, over time uh, from an extensive data collection effort. Um, the Regional Water Quality Control Board adopted the order that covers the Tulare Lake Basin. This is the area from the San Joaquin River down to, to the Tehachapi's, excluding Westland's Water District. Um, to a new general order that set forth the terms and conditions of how we would expand into the regulation of the groundwater. And again, we'll give you some more details about that as, as the uh, day, as the morning flows. So, upon the adoption of the, the expansion into groundwater, those entities on the Kings, Cuyatuli, and Kern River watersheds who had made up the Southern San Joaquin Valley Water Quality Coalition decided that due to diversity of groundwater conditions that we no longer could operate as a single coalition and so each of those watersheds have created new coalitions to represent their region. And so the Kings River Water Quality Coalition stepped up, um, was actually formed prior to the adoption of this expanded order, uh, but stepped up to uh, serve as the coalition for this surface and groundwater regulatory program now. Um, the coalition represents the entire Kings River watershed, both upstream of the Kings River surface water delivery area um, and other areas uh, adjacent to us. Um, the, um, the entity was formed really through the actions of the Kings River Conservation District Board of Directors and the Kings River Water Association and its membership uh, after hearing from you and believing that a coalition, again, gives you a preferred alternative to individual on-farm regulation. Uh, the coalition still contracts with Kings River Conservation District for management and staffing. Um, so KRCD's name often gets confused with the coalition. That's a challenge we have, but um, uh, the reality is there are two separate entities here at, at, at play. Uh, that it, the, the coalition has its own board, its own uh, bylaws, purpose, separate financial accounts, and KRCD just simply serves as its uh, fiscal and administrative agent. So that kind of ends the uh, overview. I know we're going to move, move on, and um, I'm going to be around this morning, so uh, happy to answer any questions as we get to the end. Thank you.